Number five, a baseball pitcher brings his arm forward during a pitch, rotating the forearm about the elbow. If the velocity of the ball in the pitcher's hand is 35 meters per second and the ball is 0.3 meters from the elbow joint, what is the angular velocity of the forearm? All right, so here's our little picture. Um, and uh, this will this ball right here well, represents the ball, I guess, or I should say that circle represents the ball. Right? Pretend like this line right here is the pitcher's forearm and the elbow joint is right here, okay? So uh, the fulcrum of this circular motion is the elbow. So therefore, the hand, which is out here holding the ball, right here's the forearm, is going to rotate about the elbow joint. And once the ball reaches the highest point, it's then going to be released from the hand so that it can be thrown to the catcher. All right. So what our job is, our job is to take this given information. They told us the length of the forearm, right, which is actually, if you look at the picture, right, if you were to think if you could rotate your arm in a circle here, that distance they gave you was actually the radius, okay? So that's important. And uh, so they gave us the radius, and they also told us the velocity. Now, they didn't say whether it was angular velocity or tangential linear velocity, right? Um, whenever they don't mention it, assume it is tangential, or aka linear, all right? Um, if they do not say angular, assume it is not angular. Assume it is the linear type, okay? Now, that being the case, what we need to do is somehow we need to figure out a relationship between, if possible, between radius of, circ of a circular motion object and the linear or tangential velocity. So look over on the right-hand side. Do you see a formula that might relate those items together? Yeah, right? Right here. So this one is pretty straightforward, right? This says that the velocity, I would rather it be uh, with a subscript of t so that you remember that it's the tangential velocity or a subscript of l uh, so that that will remind you that it's the linear velocity equals r times omega, which omega is the angular velocity. All right, and R represents the radius of this circular motion. So basically, we just got to make sure, right, our units are consistent, which they are here. So it's a, just a simple plug-in, all right? Not bad at all. So this is 35.0 is equal to the radius of 0.3 times omega. So just divide out the 0.3 from both sides, okay? And then omega now is simply 35 divided by 0.3 and it becomes 117, right? Considering rounding and sig figs. So 117, now remember the units here, the units for angular velocity will always be in radians, okay, per second. Those are the standard units of angular velocity. And also take a look at the angular velocity up here. Notice that it is theta divided by time. The standard unit for theta is not degree in physics, it's radian. All right, and then the standard unit for time is second. So that's why the seconds are down there. All right. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.